I thought I had a problem with my power steering pump, so I took it off and it's probably just fine. But while I had it off, I thought I might try something different. Here's the issue. In order to get to the power steering pump, I had to take the alternator off because the alternator is located right over top of the power steering pump. And I've added fluid to it in the past. And in order to do it, you can pull the cap off and you can just sort of slide it to the side. You can't even get it off, at least not on my car. And then you stick a, a real narrow funnel in there like this off to the side and then you can add power steering fluid to it. Now I had that leaky valve assembly underneath there so I always needed to be adding power steering fluid to it but this is what I found out. I didn't even know it did this but there's a dipstick on this thing which I could never even get out because the alternator was in the way and it says cold fill hot fill and on top it says Fill to proper level. Do not overfill. I'm sure I overfilled this thing a bunch of times because I could never get to the dipstick. So I had no idea what, what was going on with the thing. So I've got a new pump on order. We'll see how that goes. And I bought a remote reservoir at a swap meet. Let me show you that. On the mark with Mark. Here's what it looks like. Now, it bothers me a little bit because it's got a Chrysler star on it. This actually would fit on a Jeep. That's what this was made for. But I was at the Jefferson Swap Meet last week, and this was one of the things I was looking for. And this really was the only one that I found that I thought would work. It's got some pretty easy ears here that I'm going to be able to use to mount on and it has a dipstick too. So the new pump, I'm assuming since it uses a remote reservoir, just gets filled full and then this is where the excess ends up. So I need to build a bracket. So that's what I'm going to start doing tonight. Yesterday. Now it comes off. Well, that was way harder than it should have been. Day two. I looked around the garage for a while and I checked out my basement shop too looking for what I have for metal. It's basically scrap or leftovers from other things. Here's a piece right here. I cut this off for some other project I worked on. So, you know, I've got some small pieces of metal around. And one of the things I had is this little piece right here. This held a, uh, I'm not sure what it held. I, th I think it had an explosion proof light fixture on it, but don't quote me on that. But anyway, what I think I could come up with or to do with this, there's a spot on the inner fender well on the Corvette that is pretty vertical and it's good and flat too. So I, I'm going to drill some holes in that as part of the inner fender well. And it'll, it'll be the part where I attach it to the inner fender well is, is underneath of the hood surround. So it's not going to show very much. But as long as I do this professionally and uh, it looks well made, then I'm fine with it. Um, you're not going to even really see very much of this thing. So I was looking at this flat side here and I thought, well, look at that. I mean... I can mount right on there and that would work pretty good and then that can slide underneath and then what I think I'll do is I'll I'll cut this off and then turn it up and then that'll give me a surface to to push to bolt against and 
I'll, I'll check the angle carefully when I go to make this part up here or whichever way I go so that the reservoir ends up nice and plumb. So anyway, that was one side I was looking at. And then if you look at this side, you can see I made some marks on here already because I've made some decisions. And what I really like is... Oh, the heck? Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, that, that doesn't look right. Is that right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking of doing. Just like that. So I'm going to trim off the top right here. In fact, I'm going to trim it down at a 45-degree angle. Then I'm going to trim it flush with the top of the angle iron there. And then the bottom is a little trickier because it ends up on the angle iron here a little bit. So I'm going to trim that angle iron back and grind that weld down and then I'm going to trim I'm going to trim all of this off here with a nice radius and then across there. Then if I have to come back and add some more welds to it, then I will. In fact, I'm going to grind off most of this weld right here and then I'm going to grind a nice angle down in there and then I'm going to refill it with weld. And then after I do that, then I'm going to figure out how far underneath of the um, hood surround this needs to go and I'm going to cut out a section of this and I'm going to bend it down and then I'm going to end up with something about like that with a couple holes in it and I think that's going to hold it pretty nice you know I'll round the corners off a little bit so I don't end up ripping my arm open on it or something if I'm reaching down into the engine compartment so Let's start cutting this thing up. This is my least favorite tools of all the tools that I have. I just hate this thing. If I, if I had a saw blade, I sure wouldn't just hang it out like that in the middle of nothing. It, uh, it's just super dangerous. I just can't stand it. Here we go. I just need to trim off some of the angle iron here in order to get this to be flush down here so it's on the same plane as this side I need to cut off part of the angle iron right there so I'm just going to grind all that off then I'm going to smooth out this weld right here Let's go to the disc grinder.
another test fit here. That's kind of cruddy looking right there. Let's see if we can fix that. As far as fit goes, that doesn't look too bad. Um, I think I want to shorten that up. gap opening up on it but anyway I get a couple of holes drilled in that and that's going to trim out real nice I'm going to straighten things up Ooh, that was hot with a file and see how pretty I can make it gross looking on this back side here but after I paint that and cover it up with that that won't be seen at all of course that's mainly what is going to be visible and even that is going to be mostly tucked oh, you can't see tucked under the the hood surround Okay. All right. Now, how how long should this be? So there, there's a pretty vertical section of inner wheel well right here, which I think would work pretty good, except that I can't get a good measurement. Let's see, well, I know I'm just going to here. Wow, it's not very long. I think three inches, holy smokes, that's gonna be small, which I suppose is good. Look at that, three inches. Wow. Three inches, that's into my plate already. Well, my three inches comes to right here. So that kind of leaves the bend in this idea out. I'm just going to cut it off there and then I'm going to come back with the rest of this angle iron. Not this one, but in a direction like this to hold it on. So that's my plan. So I need to cut this sucker off. This is my grandfather's saber saw. So I don't know, probably bought sometime in the early sixties, I think. Anyway, it's got the solid metal case. So if it should ever short out, it would try to electrocute you, but it does have the ground wire on the cord still. So I should be safe. Oh, that is slow going, but it makes a clean cut. See that? Nice. There we go. Need a couple of holes, so I'll use my glorified drill press here.
kind of ugly on the other side. I think I'll hit it with the disc grinder. I've bolted my bracket onto the reservoir now so I can hold this in here and see where I can get it to fit. I also reinstalled the alternator so it has a little bit of movement you know for adjusting the belt tension on it but this is about where it's going to be so I'm just going to stay away from that. Also I put the hood prop back on and I taped it up in its um, stowed position so that I don't accidentally put this in, in a place that interferes with that. So that kind of tucks it in here a little bit different than what I was thinking. You know, maybe, I just thought of this, maybe it kind of goes in sideways like this. I have a plan and I need a third, seven inch long vertical piece here. So I'm gonna start by cutting that off. And then I have to also build kind of a kink into this too. So that'll be after I get it to length. I don't know quite exactly how much kink I need, but. I think that thing does a fine job. Oh, I was cutting through two layers at one point, apparently, or it fell off for some reason. All right, I'm going to try to use these two holes that are already in it. I'll probably clean those up a little bit. Let's see. What I need to do is I need to cut a small V into this and then I'll bend it up like this. Then when it's bolted to the inner fender well, it'll be tilting out like this a little bit. And then with that V cut there, I'll be able to straighten it up and get it nice and vertical. And then the other angle that I had that was gonna go this way, I'm gonna have it come off this way. And then I can stay a little closer to the inner fender well. So let's figure out this little V. That's what I came up with. It's not much of an angle. I can always I can always trim off a little more after I bend it. Well, it looks more like a notch than it does a V. Okay, you think that'll bend? Yep. Well, that wasn't too bad. It's a decent bend. piece wherever it went. The new power steering pump came today. So let's take a look at it and see if it compares to what I'm taking off. The mounting bolts need to be the same. So let's see what we have here. It looks a lot like it, just without the reservoir built on it. Yes, this will be this will be good. These bolts and those bolts are the same. 
This goes in a different direction here, but I don't think that will matter. I'll have to open that up and see if it's the same thread as that probably is. If it's not, I can come up with something else. Another difference is it's got this line up here, which I'm assuming that goes to the reservoir. I'm going to have to probably do a little bit of research before I go putting this on. Uh, the rest of it looks the same. I got to pull the pulley off of mine and put it on there. I'll clean that up, probably sandblast it and repaint it. That will look nice. Okay, so we're moving along nicely here. Just got a little bit more work to do on my bracket and I think I can start putting all this together. Well, I got to take that apart. This is going to soak in my parts washing tank before I go cleaning it up. Okay, here's how the bracket looks right now. Okay, and here's the reservoir. Goes on like that. I uh, had some hardware around here. That's it. So it kind of rests on the angle iron right there. And then it's bolted there. And then this is the side that will go against the wheel well. So now the front of the car is pointing at you. Yikes, I don't know. That might not work. I better take it over and test it. There we go. We got the two mounting holes in it. We just need to clean this up a little bit. And then we need to drill the holes in the fender of the car. fitting on the end of this just wasn't working out so I took this out to a custom hose place and they put a 45 on the end for me. We'll see if that works. I need to drill a couple of holes right along this inner fender well. And that's where the remote reservoir is going to be. I'm not going to be able to drill the holes from the engine bay side, so I took the wheel off and I just need to get a location and I'm going to drill it from this side. Okay, here's my bracket. Here's the remote reservoir and now it needs to go something about here. So I need to mark that hole somehow. Here is the reservoir mounted on the custom bracket I made, which is bolted to the side of the inner fender well. Make the noise. make the noise. I'm not real thrilled with my hoses here. I've got 
kind of a collapsed section there. And then I had to use a 90 here and then come across here. And then this is a reducer to get to the size hose that goes to the reservoir. The reservoir has the biggest collapse in it right there. And then it's connected here. This is a separate port that I plugged off on the bottom. I can squeeze that down and I can feel it touching when I squeeze it. So there is, um, there is room for the power steering fluid to move through there. Probably not very fast, but that's fine. It's not like this is on the pump end. This is all reservoir side. So I am not thrilled with that. Or am I thrilled with all these goofy hose clamps all over the place through here? And I may end up with some serious rubbing issues in this area too, which will probably be a problem for future Mark. Now I just need to put the alternator back on and maybe that'll cover up some of that nasty there. I do have power steering fluid in the reservoir right now and it did fill up but i don't know how much has made it down to the pump the alternator went on without much trouble looks like we're ready for a test drive now and unfortunately most of those hoses are still exposed the reservoir there does not look completely out of place, so I kind of do like that. Let's start this beast up. second bolt I found on the driveway since I started driving it. I'm gonna go walk the street and see if anything else fell off. Well, I'll let the shakedown continue. Uh, I do have power steering now. It's, it's not as power as what I was expecting. I kind of thought something like what I had. Um, it's, it's, I wasn't expecting like Buick power steering where you can just turn it with one finger, but it, uh, it kind of seems to come and go, and you probably heard there's some crazy squeal, so I don't know if the pump is protesting, and that's the belt uh, jumping and, and chattering and doing all that. That's what I suspect it is. I thought for a little bit that it was some tire rub, because I noticed it on the extreme turns when I you know did my U-turns on either end of the street here. It is nice to get the car out and actually drove it. And uh, there's some horses under that gas pedal, which I really did enjoy. So that's kind of fun. So that's kind of got me a little bit jazzed about this. Um, two mystery pieces of hardware laying in the driveway. I 
I haven't figured out where these go yet. Might be important. So I've got that. So that's where we're gonna wrap it up this week. Uh, thanks for watching my video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would really appreciate it if you do that. Uh, things have been going pretty good with the channel. I'm very happy with that. Here's a couple of pictures that I took uh, the other night. There was a full moon here. I thought it looked kind of good. I had it out on the driveway. So enjoy those and, while you're subscribing and like. And if you have a comment, I'd like to hear it. Thank you.